Good afternoon, folks. This meeting of the Winter Flounder Management Board is called to order. My name is Bill Hyatt. I'm the governor's appointee from Connecticut and the current chair of this board. Uh, the first two items of business are approval of the agenda and approval of the proceedings from February 2021. Does anybody have any edits to either of those items? Seeing none, uh, both the agenda and the proceedings from February 2021 are, are approved. Uh, by consent. The uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anybody in the room who would like to make a comment on something that is not on the Winter Flounder agenda for today? Seeing no hands, is there anybody online? Alan Butler, go ahead. Nope, I'm good. We can hear you, Alan. Uh, I'm good. And, uh, no objection. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is review of the 2022 management track assessment for Gulf of Maine and Southern New England mid-Atlantic stocks of winter flounder. Uh, we'll have presentations by Paul Nitschke and a presentation by uh, Tony Wood. Uh, Paul, I believe you're first uh, going ahead with uh, Gulf of Maine. Good afternoon. Uh, I'll be giving a quick summary of the Gulf of Maine winter flounder management track assessment which was reviewed uh, this last September. Um, this was a, a level two assessment. Um, keep in mind, this is a empirical approach now for Gulf of Maine based on 30 plus centimeter uh, survey area swept estimates. So it's a fairly uh, a simple approach. So quick overview here. As I said, it's a level two assessment. Uh, stock status is uh, unknown for overfished and because this method doesn't really uh, have a way of evaluating that. Um, so overfishing is not occurring. Um, the stock is not in a rebuilding plan since this stock was never declared overfished. Uh, in terms of uncertainties, there's uncertainties with the uh, missing 2020 surveys uh, due to COVID. Uh, this is a bigger uncertainty here because this assessment now is 100% based on the surveys. Uh, this uncertainty around the survey queues. Uh, the queues here are basically the efficiency uh, estimates for the surveys for the area swept calculations. Um, there's more uncertainty around the state surveys since we don't really have any uh, experiments on efficiency for state survey gear. Um, there's uncertainty around the uh, rejected analytical model, which based, you know, from the past, this basically says that we don't really understand a lot of the population dynamics for this stock uh, due to that failure of that model. Um, this continues somewhat into the empirical approach as we build, you know, we build up this time series. It still doesn't seem to be responding as we would expect it. So there's still big questions around, um, you know, the population dynamics. In terms of reviewer comments, uh, the reviewers suggested to use the 75% of the exp exploitation rate at 40% uh, for catch advice using the average of the 2021 fall, 2021 spring, and 22 spring surveys. So that's where the uh, basically the catch advice came from. In terms of changes, there was a revision done to the survey queue based on updated Information information from Miller et al. He re-estimated the cues uh, and some updated modeling. Uh, so the cues of the sufficiency estimate was revised up from 0.71 to 0.81 in the fall survey and from 0.62 to 0.7 in the spring. So keep in mind, and you know the efficiency increases, that means the biomass estimate uh, will decline. So the, the Gulf of Maine stock was historically the smallest of the three winter flounder stocks. Um, not sure if that's uh, no longer the case. Um, things have changed a bit since early on in the time series. Uh, the Gulf of Maine stock is 
mostly located in area 514 uh, off Massachusetts, uh, Cape Cod Bay, Bass Bay, Spellwagon Bank are important fisheries. Uh, over 95% of the stock is in this small area. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a long standing slide just showing uh, some of the history here. Uh, just to remind everyone, uh, analytical models failed in GARM 3, also at SARC 52, uh, due to the retrospective pattern. Uh, there's a large conflict basically between the large reduction in the catch over time with little change in the survey indices and little change in the size of the age structure. So we don't don't really understand the, the dynamics of what's what's going on with this stock. Uh, that seems to have continued with a simple approach as we build up this time series. So here are the survey trends, the raw survey trends. On top is the Northeast Fishery Science Center bond trawl survey. In the middle is the Mass DMS survey, and on the bottom is the Maine New Hampshire survey. You can see that the Indices are relatively flat, you know, over the longer time series. Uh, they do bounce around quite a bit, but overall, there's not much real change uh, over the decades. Um, perhaps more recently, there's a little bit of a hint of an increase. Uh, this is a positive sign. Hopefully, hopefully that trend continues, but it's probably too early to make a, a strong judgment on that. So here are the trends in catch over time. You can see there's been a very large uh, reduction in catch. Uh, the recreational fishery was a major component of the removals in the 1980s. That declined very quickly into the 1990s. Uh, the, the commercial catch was more of a gradual decline. Um, and more recently, over the last three years, we're down near record lows in terms of catch. So catch is very low. So this assessment is now um, just simply based on the 30 plus area swept to calculate biomass. Um, we have to use three different surveys because we don't have a single survey that covers the entire stock. So we basically use three surveys with non-overlapping strata. Uh, the NIMS survey covers uh, offshore strata in parts of uh, Massachusetts inshore, and Maine, New Hampshire covers the inshore area um, to the north, and the Mass DMF covers a shallow strata that the, the Bigelow can't sample off the coast of Massachusetts. Next slide, please. So the exploitable biomass is, is now defined as the 30 plus centimeter biomass index per tow multiplied by this uh, expansion factor, which is simply the total survey area divided by the total footprint times Q. Uh, Q here you can think of as the efficiency of the gear. Um, exploitable biomass is sensitive to this assumption, so it's it's an a, a important assumption to make. Um, ex, ex, the exploitation rate then is simply the catch over that 30 plus centimeter biomass estimate. And the, the biological reference points are based on the yield per crew analysis done at uh, length based yield per crew done for F40. And here, here's some work that Tim Miller uh, updated in terms of the efficiency experiment. Um, this was based on a twin trawl study comparing the relative catches of the Bigelow versus a more efficient flat net They're done on a, on a vessel that can tow both nets at the same time. So we can get some idea of the uh, relative efficiency of the of the Bigelow gear. Uh, Tim updated the calculations of, um, of Q, of the efficiency, uh, taking into account the day-night differences 
and also uh, length effects. You can see that the day-night effects are are uh, pretty different. And and then during the day, you can see there's a length effect. Next slide, please. So here are the, uh, the estimates from the spring on top and the fall on the bottom. Uh, the different colors represent the proportion uh, in each survey. Um, in the spring, you can see there's a greater proportion of the stock in the inshore uh, areas in the state surveys, since more of the stock is inshore spawning during that time. So originally, we had more confidence in the fall estimates because there were some concerns that fish could be inside the estuaries and we could be missing those fish in the spring. Also, we have better information on uh, the Bigelow efficiency, so there was a little more confidence in the fall. However, regardless of that, those facts, um, both estimates are very similar uh, between the spring and the fall. Uh, next slide, please. So here's the basically the, the lines here, the total estimates from the from the bar graph. And you can see that the spring and fall uh, estimates are very similar. More recently, there's an increase, those last three points at the end here, uh, in the biomass estimates. And we're basically using the average of those three points uh, for the catch advice. So there's some sign of hope here, and hopefully, hopefully this continues into the future, and perhaps there is a response uh, to the low catches at this point. Next slide, please. Um, here is the area swept uh, estimates over time on the left. This is from the fall survey. And you can see that it doesn't really correspond to uh, the exportations on the right. Uh, the exportation rates have been far below the overfishing definition, which is that dotted line on top uh, for the entire time series. And it doesn't seem to be responding overall to the to what we think as low exploitation rates but perhaps here at the end of the time series there is the beginning of a response and hopefully that continues and it's just not uh, a year effect going forward next slide please here's another way of looking at that response um you can see how the the response uh has been going in the wrong direction on the low exportation rates in the beginning of the time series. And more recently, um, things have turned around and it seems like biomass is increasing. But perhaps that's due to the where the catches are and, and where the exportation rates are at the end of the time series. Uh, next slide, please. So, this is the time series for the catch advice coming out of this, uh, mostly this empirical approach. You can see how the catch advice does bounce around with when the assessments come in. Um, however, all the estimates, all the catch advice have, has been uh, relatively high compared to the uh, catches. You can see the catch trend over time has been declining and is far below the um, catch advice. So it, isn't, it doesn't appear that uh, the quarters are very constraining for the stock as the catches uh, continue to decline, even though um, the quarters have been higher. Next slide, please. And uh, I don't know if you want to I mean, answer questions now or. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you for that presentation. And yeah, we'll take a few questions now before we roll into the uh, Southern New England uh, Mid Atlantic. Uh, presentation. Any questions for Paul? Got Warren Emerson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul, for your presentation. Um, I got a question on the on the Q estimates. All right. So each of those three different gear types, I'm guessing, has a different catchability. Right. So were they averaged together? When I say the three different gear types, I mean the three different the three different surveys. So I guess it's a two-part question. One is, for those three surveys, 
do each of those 12 years have their own catchability? And if it is different from the others, then the cue that you presented, is that an average of the three or how did you compute that, that cue, the catchability? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the major sources of uncertainty. We only have efficiency estimates on the Bigelow gear type from the experiment. We don't have any information on what the efficiency is for, you know, the mass DMF survey here and the main New Hampshire survey here. So with the lack of that information, we're basically assuming the same cues from the Bigelow on those surveys. Even though those survey gears are different. So that's one of the reasons why we have a little more confidence in the fall estimates when a greater proportion of the population is in the offshore NIMS survey. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, we have no other questions in the room and none online, so at this point we'll move on to the Southern New England Mid-Atlantic Stack uh, Management Track Assessment. Uh, Tony Wood. Okay, thanks very much. I just want to confirm that people can hear me still okay? Yep, you sound great. Great. Uh, so this is a review of the Southern New England Winter Flounder Assessment from last year. Uh, the stock went through um, the spring management track schedule, so it was reviewed in June, a little earlier than Gulf of Maine. Next slide, please. Uh, so just a little history. The last assessment for this stock was the 2020 management track updates, the multi-species ground fish updates. Uh, the current model at that time was a statistical catch at age, ages one through seven plus and years through 2019. Uh, the reference points at that time, uh, the one I would like to point out here and just note, um, the biomass reference point of about 12,000 metric tons. Uh, that's going to come back a little later. And the stock status at the time, it was overfished, but overfishing was not occurring. Next slide, please. So for data that goes into the assessment, the the data structure, model structure, model type, nothing uh, in that regard changed for this update. It was a very straightforward update. Uh, the major changes uh, for this management track and what caused it to be a level three assessment uh, were changes to how the reference points are calculated. So again, I'll get to that later. But everything else is consistent with how uh, the operational assessments have been run for the past decade or so. So commercial landings for this assessment uh, from 1981 to 2019 came from our AA tables. And from 2020 to 2021 from our new catch accounting and monitoring system. Uh, these are stratified by market category quarter or half year. Uh, commercial discards based on our standardized bycatch reporting methodology. And the recreational information that goes into this assessment comes from MRIP. Next slide, please. So again, the 2020 and 2021 commercial landings are from our new catch accounting and monitoring system, and the rest comes from our old AA table algorithms. 2020 landings were 120 metric tons, and 2021 landings were 87 metric tons. Uh, these are the lowest in the time series um, and are down around the levels of when there was a federal moratorium for the species in 2009 to 2012. Uh, the time series average for commercial landings is 2,800 metric tons. So a lot of these plots are similar to what you've seen uh, for Gulf of Maine. Things seem to have fallen off the cliff. Next slide, please. Commercial discards are mainly from trawl and scallop dredge fisheries. 2021 commercial discards were 122 metric tons with a time series average of about 400 metric tons. Next slide. For recreational information, uh, the recreational component for this stock used to be pretty important. Um, now it's almost non-existent. 2021 recreational landings were 5.1 metric tons, uh, well, well below the time series average. 
For these two recreational plots, I have the old MRIP information, so the uncalibrated information prior uh, to the MRIP calibration that took place in 2017-ish. Uh, and the blue is the new information. So the blue is the information that is currently going into the assessment. Next slide, please. For recreational discards, 2021 recreational discards were 1.1 metric tons. Again, uh, very much lower than they used to be and much lower than the time series average. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So for total catch, the 2021 total catch was 216 metric tons. Next slide, please. And the total catch components here uh, mostly made up of commercial landings and commercial discards now uh, with the two recreational components uh, much reduced from historical levels. Next slide, please. For survey information going into this assessment, uh, we have the Northeast Fishery Science Center surveys, winter, spring, and fall, uh, the Neomap spring, Mass DMF spring, Rhode Island and Connecticut spring surveys, New Jersey Ocean and River Trawl Survey, the URI Graduate School of Oceanography Trawl Survey, and then two age zero uh, recruitment surveys from Massachusetts and Connecticut. Next slide, please. So these are the regional surveys, um, the Science Center surveys and the NEAMAP surveys scaled to their means, um, showing fairly similar uh, trends in decline from the late 90s, early 2000s to, to now. Next slide, please. This one's kind of a jumble, but again, they also show generally the same trend that the catch has shown, uh, drastic declines from historical uh, levels. And these are all of the local state uh, trawl surveys that, that are going into the assessment. And then for the two age zero survey indices, uh, they're both pretty flat, except for uh, the Connecticut, which has really dropped off in the past decade or so. Next slide, please. The biological information is consistent with what came out of the last benchmark in 2011 for this stock. Natural mortality is set at 0.3. Our maturity information comes from uh, Massachusetts DMS Spring Survey maturity data. And again, it's carried over from the last benchmark. Uh, so these input values were retained for this and previous operational assessments. Next slide, please. please. So for a final model configuration, we have a single fleet going into the model with commercial and recreational landings and discards. Uh, there's three selectivity blocks. Uh, with a forced flat top selectivity on these uh, selectivity blocks, 12 survey indices, and then a single penalty on the numbers in the first year. 2021 bio estimates, biomass estimates, uh, 4,600 metric tons for total biomass and about 3,300 metric tons for spawning stock biomass. Next slide, please. 2021 F. Uh, 0.061, almost the lowest in the time series. Next slide, please. Recruitment has been pretty low and much lower than historical levels uh, for the past decade and a half. Uh, 2021 recruitment was at 4.4 million fish. And for retrospective patterns, uh, the retrospective bias has actually decreased a little bit since the previous operational assessment. And it's considered a minor retrospective, so there's no retro adjustment uh, going into stock status determination for this stock. Reference points are, are SPR 40%. Uh, for F 40% is 0.265 based on yield per recruit SPR analyses. Next slide, please. So this is where the major change was for this go around. Um, the current uh, biomass reference point methodology uses recruitment from the entire time series or prior to this assessment it did uh, based on comments from the commission, the councils, SSCs, etc. Um, and just realizing that 
the current productivity of this stock is probably not able to match historical productivity levels. Uh, we decided to move to a more recent stanza for recruitment uh, that is more reflective of the current stock productivity. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so you can see looking at the median values for different uh, subsets of the time series, uh, previously being fed into the projections to determine that biomass ref reference point, the median from the entire time series is 15,000 metric tons. Uh, if we switch to some more recent stanzas, a 20-year and a 10-year, we, we drastically lower that median um, uh, of the recruitment values that are being used in the projections. Next slide, please. Trying to find some support for making this decision. Um, we looked at research that Rich Bell and I have done looking at estuary and winter water temperatures and how the mean of uh, the index that we came up with has moved above a five degree level, which is a level that um, has been shown in the literature to be detrimental to uh, recruitment events in a given year if um, an estuary has a temperature at or above this level. In the past 10 years, um, the index that we came up with has traveled above this level four times. In the past 20 years, it's traveled above this level about six times. But you can just see the general trend of warming um, from this temperature index over time uh, and how it's potentially affecting the productivity of this stock. Next slide, please. Uh, the final thing that we looked at, which I, I, I didn't show here, it gets pretty technical, um, but a quantitative analysis using a recursive partition regression tree uh, did end up splitting our productivity time series and our recruitment time series at about the 20 year uh, mark. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the temperature index has crossed over the five degree level six times in the past 20 years, four times in the past 10. It is possible if we see some stable or cooler winter temperatures, we could achieve some of those middle levels of recruitment from the early 2000s. Uh, for this assessment, we proposed and did use the last 20 years of recruitment for the uh, biomass reference point projections. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So for updated reference points, uh, the fishing mortality in 2021 was 0.61, and the SSB in 2021 was 3,300 metric tons. Our new fishing mortality reference point uh, at 40% is 0.265, and our SSB SY reference point is 3,300 metric tons, down from what I pointed out earlier, that about 12,000 metric tons uh, reference point. Uh, half of that is our threshold, and the MSY is currently sitting at about 1,000 metric tons. So we're currently at 101% of the target biomass wise, realizing that we have not changed our perception of the stock, we've just moved the goalposts. So our status has changed. It's now The stock is now not overfished, and overfishing is not occurring. There's no retrospective adjustment necessary. And I think that's it. Are there any questions? Thank you, Tony. Um, any questions for Tony specific to the Southern New England Atlantic stock or wind flounder? No hands in the room. Is there anybody online? No, nobody online. So great. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And, and Paul, Tony, thank you for those excellent. Uh, presentations are well, excellent, although not exactly encouraging, but thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda is to set the 2024-25 specifications. Uh, Tracy is going to provide an overview. Uh, then we'll go into review the technical committee recommendations, uh, review the advisory panel report, then we'll have some opportunity for questions. And then there is a, um, a prepared motion, a motion that's been prepared by staff that'll be uh, put up for your consideration. So, Tracy, why don't you uh, take it away? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will be reviewing a couple of items under this agenda item. Um, so first, I will be taking you through an overview of or summary of the New England Fishery Management Council 
winter flounder specifications for fishing year 2023 through 2025. Then I will be moving into a little brief summary of the, um, the addendum three specifications process. Uh, then I will hand over the presentation to Rich, the TC chair, who will give a summary of the uh, TC recommendations. Then I will provide the um, AP report summary. And lastly, we'll move into board action. All right. So after the two management track stock assessments that Tony and Paul just reviewed were accepted for management use, the council met this past December to set specs for federal waters for fishing years 2023 through 2025 uh, through the approval of framework 65. There's a target date of May 1st for implementation for this framework 65. I have a table here uh, which displays the total ACL and the ground fish sub ACL for this past year. 2022 and the upcoming ACL for fishing years 2023 through 2025 as set in framework 65. So you can compare the two. The total ACL increased by 60% for the Gulf of Maine stock and 37% for the Southern New England Mid Atlantic stock compared to the previous year. They were adjusted up as a reflection of the results of the 2022 management track stock assessments. So moving into the state subcomponents, this table displays the state subcomponents for each of the stocks that can be found in framework 65. The state subcomponent is comprised of both the recreational and commercial catch. The commercial portion of the state subcomponent is caught by vessels that do not hold federal Northeast multi-species permits. And the recreational portion is based off of um, MRIP estimates of recreational catch. The state subcomponent is an estimate of catch that is expected in the upcoming years from state waters and is determined by the average catch from the most re few recent years. The state subcomponent is not an allocation and so there's no accountability measures associated with the state water subcomponent, meaning there's no pound for pound payback if the state water subcomponent is exceeded. So looking at the table, you can see that the 2023 through 2025 Gulf of Maine and Southern New England Mid-Atlantic state subcomponents were revised downwards from the 2022 value to reflect recent fishery trends. In both cases, the five-year average of catch was used to determine what the state subcomponent would be. They used the five-year average as opposed to a three-year average just to better account for the variability in landings in recent years um, as at least the past couple of years, as you saw from the previous presentation, they've been very low. So moving into a little summary or a reminder about the addendum three specs process, because it's been a couple of years since you guys have looked at this. I think it was back in 2001, uh, 2021. So as a reminder, addendum three, um, which was approved in 2013, revised the state specs process, setting process so that recreational and commercial measures may be set for up to three years. And this was to better align with the federal water specs process. The commercial measures that are subject to change, um, as you can see up on the screen, are trip limits, trigger trip limits, size limits, season, area closures, and then the rec measures, size limit, bag limits, and season. So you, I'll have a look slide for these later if you want to see them again, but this is a table showing the commercial winter flounder regulations as they are today, and they have not been changed since 2014. So you can see the differing regulations between the Gulf of Maine winter flounder and the Southern New England mid-Atlantic winter flounder um, through the stock unit column. And here we have the current record, uh, recreational winter fauna regulations listed by state for both the Gulf of Maine stocks and the Southern New England Mid-Atlantic stocks with their differing career limits of eight for Gulf of Maine and two for Southern New England Mid-Atlantic and that size limit across the board of 12 inches. And then you can see in a lot of the Southern New England Mid-Atlantic, they have um, seasonal closures. So I think we're gonna move past this here. Is that correct, Mr. Yeah. Chair? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into the technical committee meeting, meeting, sum, meeting summary, cannot talk, 
um, if Rich is available. Great. Uh, so I'm Rich Belauskas. I'm a biologist for the state of Rhode Island. Um, work on winter flounder, and I've taken over the uh, chair this year of the TC from Paul Nitschke, who's been running this uh, for quite some time. But uh, as he has, you know, ten other stocks to work on, uh, we thought we'd give him a break on this. Um, so we met. Uh, the TC met last week or a couple weeks ago on the 11th, um, and we started off the conversation by, you know, acknowledging this increase in federal catch advice uh, through the New England Fishery Management Council, uh, as well as that change in stock status for the Southern New England Mid-Atlantic stock uh, from overfish to not overfishing. Uh, so honestly, you know, we started the conversation thinking that at least there was a possibility that we may be discussing uh, potential increases in limits as we go on. Uh, that said, uh, it was equally noted that for the change in stock status for Southern New England, that, uh, you know, despite those changes, as Tony said, we really have no change in our perception of how that stock uh, looks overall. Um, and, you know, on that note, state surveys across the board uh, for both stocks have seen either declines or are really remaining honestly, near detection levels. Uh, you know, we had those couple slight increases most recently in the Gulf of Maine stock, uh, but certainly not enough data to suggest uh, a trend of any sort to recovery. Uh, next slide. So, you know, as was noted, even with, you know, the extraordinarily low rates of fishing mortality that we've had for quite some time, uh, we've not really seen a a measurable rebound in either of the stocks. Uh, and it's pretty pretty well understood that climate and natural mortality uh, might be might be hindering that recovery. So, you know, we, we chatted on this topic for quite some time and worked our way to, to a unanimous agreement uh, for status quo for both stocks moving forward uh, for both commercial and recreational uh, limits as they stand now. Um, there was some discussion moving forward about how we'll go about potentially um, figuring out decreases moving forward, but as of now, status quo uh, felt like the right move. Uh, and then finally, how the group as a whole was thinking about this, as well as in consultation with Tony and Paul, that status quo is probably our best technical advice moving forward as a bridge to the 2026 uh, research track stock assessment uh, where we plan to incorporate uh, a significant amount more of uh, climate data into modeling that's you know very hopefully going to give us some more insights into the trends for both uh, Gulf of Maine and Southern New England stock moving forward. Uh, so that's summary. It was a it was a very productive meeting, uh, a lot of back and forth. Uh, but as noted, uh, the TC is recommending status quo, full stocks, uh, commercial and recreational. Thanks, Rich. So I will be taking over the AP meeting summary. Um, Bud Brown was not able to make it today due due to a work obligation, so I'll be covering that for him. Uh, so four AP members met on January 12th, um, a day after the TC met to discuss some of the same things. They looked at the specifications from the New England Fishery Management Council, um, current fishery management issues, and provided some research recommendations. So um, I will start off with the recommendations related to the specs and the management measure specifically. Um, one advisor recommended a moratorium in the Gulf of Maine and Southern New England Mid-Atlantic stocks. Uh, one advisor recommended allowing at least some catch um, for the following benefits that he listed, um, where it minimizes dead discards and allows um, for biological data to continue to be collected on catch, which is something we wouldn't really have if it, there was a moratorium. And then another advisor saw merits to both recommendations. So one advisor commented that the winter flounder fishing season in the Southern New England Mid-Atlantic region should be limited again. Um, the Southern New England 
Mid-Atlantic Region's recreational season was expanded by board action in 2014. It used to be a 60-day recreational open season before that. Um, in addition, uh, these two advisors said that there should be some, oh, I was going to say, well, two advisors expressed support for all states in the Southern New England, Mid-Atlantic, and Gulf of Maine regions to adopt a commercial and recreational spawning season closure. And they had um, also recommended that this closure be consistent among states um, in terms of dates and that all states adopt this. So moving into some more general um, concerns and recommendations that they discussed, um, there were some general concerns, of course, about the continued low abundance of rare flounder in the Southern New England, Mid-Atlantic and Gulf of Maine regions. Uh, one advisor commented on that the low rates of reproduction will not be able to overcome the high rate um, of natural mortality that winter flounder is currently experiencing. They, uh, the AP also had a few research recommendations. Two advisors were concerned that the way stock assessments are currently conducted aren't capturing the potential differences between localized substocks and recommended further research into the genetic structure of winter flounder. Uh, another uh, AP member expressed concern that discards from observer data are being misrecorded and recommended that discard and discard mortality in state water should be further investigated. Winter flounder discards in state waters are currently calculated from only federal observer data, and so these data are more uncertain than federal discard numbers. This advisor had recommended that states should not only recommend, uh, not only rely on the federal observer program to calculate the discards, but instead invest in their own systems to calculate discards and discard mortality. So with that, I think um, we can take any questions. So uh, thank you. Are there any questions, any questions on the overview, any questions on the technical committee recommendations or the uh, advisory panel report? No hands in the room, any hands online? So we have no questions. And at this, at this point in time, I believe we've got a prepared motion that we can put up that reflects the uh, technical committee's recommendation. And we'll put that up for consideration and see if anybody is willing or interested in making that motion. Okay, so here's a, a, a motion prepared by staff. Is there anybody on the board who is willing to make that motion? Connor, we have a second. Justin, okay, Connor, would you like to speak to the motion, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I, I think the rationale that the technical committee has put forth is, is pretty sound that our perception on the stock has um, not quite changed, even uh, with the changes in the reference points and and how the projections have been done. So I think it, uh, the status quo approach um, is warranted um, um, at, for the time being. Thanks. Thank you, Connor. Uh, Justin, do you have anything to add? Okay, all set. So we've got a motion. Um, a motion move to approve status quo commercial and recreational Southern New England, Mid-Atlantic and Gulf of Maine winter flounder measures for the 2024 2025 fishing years. Motion by Dr. McManus, second by Dr. Davis. Is there any discussion? Emerson. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I would support this motion, right? I mean, all we did really was we changed the reference points and therefore we, we have instant underfishing, even though spawning stock biomass has not really changed. So um, for that reason, I would support this motion. Thank you, Emerson. Is there any other comments? Anything from the uh, online or anything from the public? No. Okay, seeing none, is there any objection to this motion? Any abstentions? So the motion passes by unanimous consent. Next item on the agenda is to consider the fishery management plan review and state compliance for the 2021 fishing year. Tracy. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I will be presenting on the Winter Founder FMP review for the 2021 fishing year. Um, fishery performance and the assessments, all the information were already touched on by Paul and Tony, so I'm not going to rehash any information. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, so this is an abbreviate, abbreviated pr presentation um, of the recommendations of the PRT. So generally right into things, um, to the uh, reporting requirements under Amendment 1. Under Amendment 1, the states of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York are required to conduct annual surveys of juvenile recruitment to develop an annual juvenile abundance index for winter flounder. In addition, the states of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut and New Jersey are required to conduct annual trawl surveys to develop an index of spawning stock biomass. So all states except for New Jersey had resumed normal operation of their sampling programs by 2021. Um, New Jersey did not conduct their ocean trawl uh, program sampling in 2021 due to COVID protocols, but normal operations uh, resumed in 2022. Um, overall survey indices, um, as you saw with the previous presentations uh, remain below average in the southern New England mid-Atlantic area. So for state compliance, no inconsistencies were found among the states with regard to the FMP requirements. Um, and the POT recommends approval of state compliance reports and de minimis status for New Jersey's commercial fishery, which they requested this year. And any research recommendations can be found in the FMP review review document or in the um, stock assessment reports. So, like I said, short and sweet. Um, are there any questions? Any questions for Tracy? Seeing none in the room, any online? No. None online. And so, uh, once again, we do have a motion that's been prepared by staff, a motion to approve the fishery management plan review. If we can have that up there. and. See if anybody on the board is interested in making the motion. Emerson. Yeah, I'll make the motion. You want me to read it into the record? Yes, please. Move to approve the winter flounder fishery management plan review for the 2021 fishing year, state compliance reports, and de minimis status for New Jersey's commercial fisheries. Thank you, Emerson. Do we have a second? Eric Reed. So we've got a motion by Mr. Hasbrook, a second by Mr. Reed. I'll move to approve the Winter Flounder Fishery Management Plan review for the 2021 fishing year, state compliance reports, and de minimis status for New Jersey commercial fisheries. Uh, is there any discussion? Anything online? Nothing online. Um, is there any objection to this motion? Any abstentions? Motion passes by unanimous consent. Uh, last item that we have on the agenda is uh, review and populate the advisory panel. Um, we have a nomination from Tina. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I uh, present for your consideration and approval the nomination of Alan Butler uh, uh, from Massachusetts. He's a recreational angler to the winter advisory panel. Thank you, Tim. Do we have a second? Uh, right, second. Um, any discussion? Your motion, yes. <laughs> OK. Do we have any discussion? No discussion. Oh, sorry. Justin seconds it. OK, thank you. Excellent. Uh, do we have any discussion? Nothing in the room. Anything online? So uh, we have a motion made by uh, Dan McKinnon, second by Justin Davis, move to approve Alan Butler of Massachusetts to the Winter Flounder Advisory Panel. Um, is there any objection? Is there any abstentions? Motion passes by unanimous consent. Thank you. Okay, and at this point, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Is there any other business to come before the Winter Flounder Management Board? Seeing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.